just gonna read to you a question someone posted in one of the comments of a video here, and then we're gonna talk about it. It says, can you make a video on how one always has a sense of disbelief even though one experiences a narcissist and their manipulations for decades. Even when a friend or family member is calling you out on everything that's happening, you still get in disbelief. So what we're talking about here is the amnesia that happens. It is the cognitive dissonance that happens from the way our brains perceive all the toxic things that are happening. My name is Lise Colucci and I am here to help you understand and recover from and transform your life after narcissistic people have been in it. And Okay, so let's talk about this. Things become normalized. When you have lived enough years with the same patterns, and especially when you have grown up with those same patterns, those patterns become normalized. They feel like normal life, even though you can see outside of your life that other people don't have that experience. Even though you can watch it in a movie, you can see it on television, whatever, that people shouldn't have to have that kind of life. Because what happens is your life becomes reality. And what you see outside when you see people happy and being kind to each other and all of that feels like fantasy. It doesn't feel like it's your reality. So just like anything that you experience over and over can feel like home, this feels like home. This feels normal. And so what happens is someone calls out the behavior or when you have a flash of awareness that this isn't right, that I should not be treated like this, that person is being very toxic to me, that person is hurtful to me, whatever it is, you believe it for that second because you see outside of the conditioning that you're used to, all right? But then, as time goes on, as things normalize again through the narcissistic pattern that happens through the love bombing and the devaluing or the dismissal and then the sort of giving you a grump bread comes of attention, whatever it is the narcissist is doing to pull you back into the drama with them and pull you back into being under their control, you believe it because it feels normal. It feels like home. Okay, so what happens when people leave toxic situations and narcissistic people is oftentimes they are so uncomfortable in the silence. They are so uncomfortable. Have you experienced this? Have you left a toxic relationship or toxic family or whatever it is and then been in the silence, been in the, the ease, so to speak, of not having toxic people around? Have you been in the quiet and felt completely panicked and completely lost and like, you can't stand the silence or you can't stand being alone with your thoughts. Have you had that experience? Let me know in the comments because that is something a lot of people experience. And that is the place of danger, so to speak here, because once you're there, anything to feel normal, anything to feel like you're okay again, to, to feel grounded and rooted in your life again, is what you're seeking. And, and the thing that will make that happen is reaching back to that toxic person. However, that isn't actually creating safety and you can see it from a distance. But when you're in it, this is the cycle. This is our cycle. And so we have to listen to the knowledge and listen to the intuition that says this isn't right and listen to the people who care about us who are saying, get out, get away, get help. Okay, and if you need help for things like this, please check out the information in the main description of every video because there's information on coaching, group coaching, and peer support there that might just help you get on your way to getting through this so that you don't loop back in, fall for a hoover, stay with a narcissist, or start believing that the toxic is okay. All right, and if not that, please seek help elsewhere because it's important that you take the steps for your life to find help for this and to get away from toxic people. So I hope that explains it. It is cognitive dissonance is when your mind thinks one thing and your feelings feel an opposing thought or viewpoint, okay? And that happens because you're continually thrown loops. You're continually thrown opposing things. Love bombing feels amazing devaluing feels terrible. How can the same person do both of those things? It makes no sense, especially when it's undeserving and unprovoked. All right. And that's what you're used to. And that creates confusion in the brain and the emotional 
sort of like the way they communicate, the way your mind and your emotions communicate back and forth. Your, your thoughts of your emotions are strong and they're saying, but everyone deserves a second chance. Every, oh, they're, they'll be good sometimes if only I can bring back the good times, right? They're doing all of that. And your mind, your logical mind, who is separate from the emotional mind is saying, part of your mind, you know what I'm saying, is saying, yeah, no, this person's toxic, get away. And there's this war and battle going on in your own head and heart. And you spend your time there, it creates this feeling of disbelief that anything actually ever happened. It makes you go, I don't know. I don't know, right? It, it numbs you up and it puts you into a fog. So it is really in tracing it back, seeing reality as it is, that the toxic person is toxic, they are not going to change, and that it is up to you to heal yourself now after this relationship. Not alone, there's help out there, okay? <laughs> so hit the thumbs up here and hit subscribe, share these videos, and you guys, I will see you next time. Let me know in a comment here what you wanna talk about, and I will try and answer your questions as well. Take care.